Hi and welcome to the Dexter Loves Annie Crafty Podcast. I am the cat. This is episode three. Today is July the 26th and I think at the moment we're up to 15 subscribers. So thank you. I really do appreciate everyone that takes the time to subscribe and, and watch. Um, otherwise there's no point, is there? So thank you. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, I have my drink with me today. I have a cold tea, cold brew tea, and it is um, rhubarb and custard by Bird and Blend. Um, they're a great company. Loads and loads of fun different blends of tea. Leaves that you can cold blend or, or hot blend. Yeah. Cold brew or hot brew. Yeah. Cold brew basically, um, and they sell the bottle to do it in. So it's, it's a big glass bottle with a filter at the top, and um, you put it in the fridge for a few hours and then just pour it out to your glass. It's beautiful. And um, I hope you have a nice beverage too, maybe even a snack. Might have to make lunch soon. And I'm joined by my trusty Dexter, who is by my side. As per usual, Annie's upstairs because she's noisy. Okay, so um, I'm Kat. I live in Buckinghamshire in England um, with my husband, my two dogs and my three guinea pigs and many fish. And um, this is my crafty podcast. I would list all the crafts that I do, but it would be quicker to list the ones that I don't do. <laughs> um, this is mainly from my knitting and sewing and spinning. Other things will probably sneak in from time to time. So, without further ado, works in progress. Here today in the chicken bag is that Aran shawl. I have actually managed to do some work on it. Not loads, um, but I am really enjoying the cable pattern. And... Um, Okay, here we go. So we're up to there now. So it's basically cable, bit of lace, cable, bit of lace, cable, bit of lace, teeny tiny cable, and then garter stitch, which I'm just trusting the process. I'm not a fan of garter stitch really, but um you know, here we go. So it's uh, it's made up on six millimeter circular needles. I love circular needles. It makes your knitting not so heavy, especially when it's going to get big. Because um, this repeat that I'm doing here, we, we're, we're from where the garter stitch started. That's where I've started from. That's the back. <laughs> garter stitch that I started from um, that that's my progress from there um, and this is a repeat of 12 rows and it has to be repeated 12 times um, so it is going to get pretty massive and also blocking will you know, do nice things to this skull eventually and stir across the sofa there um, when it's all stretched out blocking is essential for knitting and that basically involves pinning it out to the shape and size that you it needs to be and either dampening it or steaming it with a hand steamer. I have bought a hand steamer and I intend to use it this time on this um, shawl. So the yarn is Women's Institute Soft and Smooth. And I got it at Hobbycraft. I think it's exclusive to Hobbycraft. I'm not sure on that one. And the pattern, the pattern is called Cozy Winter and it's by Melanie Meilinger, Meilinger. So my next work in progress, I have actually made some progress on this one. On my t-shirt, jumper, jumper t-shirt, on the yarn that I dyed myself, 
it's not looking too sexy right now. Um, let's get it. <clears throat> so remember this one, there's a bit of lace around the bottom. I've now, I'm up to the armholes. That's the back all sectioned off. No, that's the front sectioned off. I'm working on the back and um, I've got about an inch to go on the back here. And this is done in a fingering weight yarn that I dyed myself. I actually had to um, cake up a third skein of this stuff. It's really beautiful. Which hopefully means I'll have one spare skein. Usually I do more than I need because um, I spent a long time playing the yarn chicken game with stuff that I'd spun or, or, or dyed. <laughs> so we always make too much and then that means that that skein is available to buy if you get to it before I find another project for it, which happens. So that pattern is called Shoreline Tea and it's by Yarnia Designs. And I've done it a bit longer than um, pattern calls for by about three or four inches. I don't remember now. Um, I'm a little intimidated, got to say, um, with the amount of um instructions there are um for back shoulder shaping front neckline shaping um neck band there's a lot to do but as with anything that intimidates me i'm going to work through it just line by line and um anything i don't understand i will youtube <laughs> because there are so many fabulous youtubers out there giving us great info and uh, videos on how to do things and I have no doubt that I'll be able to actually do it. Um, I'm just slightly intimidated right now. Um, okay, so I have a new whip work in progress, um, another shawl. It's part of a knit along um, that I saw on Instagram, I'll give you the details in a minute, but it is being done in my own hand dyed. UV reactive fluorescent uh, four ply and I have a blue light torch because it just had to be done here but can you see how cool that is no you can't can you maybe you can I don't know maybe I hope that shows up on camera but it is really cool and um and this is where I'm at with it. I have some circular knitting needles coming because it's very soon going to get too big for just single needles. And I haven't worked in, with single needles in such a long time. It, it's quite weird. I um, don't think I like it. I think it's going to be, have to be circular needles for forever. <laughs> so these are made on three and three quarter mil needles and the project is called reach for the stars shore and it is by under the olive tree and it is a knit along i'll put details down the bottom for you there's still time. I'm a bit late, as per, um, and uh, but I think it still goes on for a few weeks. And it seems to be knitting up quite quickly. I mean, I just did that. That's a couple of hours knitting from yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, um, I worked in the morning and did a bit of that, and did a bit of the jumper, which has disappeared now. Um, and that is the only sort of stocking it section and then it's all lace so I'm sort of expecting it to expand quickly um, there seems to be a total of 
it's a one skein project actually I should say um, it's about 300 rows I think yeah it works up to about 300 rows and um, that is 86 and it's supposed to fit it's supposed to just use one skein I do have some spare I did I, I dyed two of these and used some for socks um, so yeah that is 86 rows so yeah hopefully the lace will make it bigger let's see if the UV works on this one. Ooh, yeah that's oh splashing ordinary please yeah that's pretty cool so a funky old lady shawl <laughs> Not that I'm calling myself old, but you know, I am. <laughs> so that is all my works in progress. Now for finished objects. I am doing, I am still doing the Crazy Sock Lady Summer Sock Camp. And I finished, I, I'm using it as an opportunity to get some socks in for birthday and Christmas presents. So... My sister's boyfriend's socks are now finished. I think I've I've put the details of this yarn up in previous videos, but it's Drops Fable. An old, old um, ball of yarn. I don't even know if it's still actually in, in production. It's still, I can still get hold of it. I got hold of this on Amazon, actually, when I was looking for um, a second ball because I'd actually run out of one when I was halfway through a pair. That's in a previous episode. Um, and my sister and her boyfriend are expecting a baby. I'm going to be an auntie. Yay. I think I've mentioned that. Might have mentioned it a few times. So my idea, I thought it'd be rather cute to do matching baby socks. And oh my god. How cute! So they're going to be getting a pair of adult socks and a pair of baby socks to match. I only did the contrast cuff. It was just, I think it was only about four rows for the toes. It didn't seem worth it. Oh my god. Oh my. So that's, that's my new obsession now. I haven't actually cast on any more socks just yet, but um, I will be. And then I did a pair for my sister. And she has ridiculously small feet, and most none of my sock blockers, the ones that I bent out of coat hangers, fit. Um, my my sock blockers barely fit. Um, but there we are. These are my sister's socks. And it's her birthday next month, so she's going to get these soon. Minus the dog hairs. <laughs> and. I should probably put these on salt blockers, but I'm not going to because I'll be fiddling too much. But I love these. <laughs> Look how cute. I didn't do any contrasting on these because actually this blue is also in this mix. Again, Drops Fable is the uh, brand. So cute. So Junior will have matching socks with Mummy and Daddy and they'll be getting the same again for Christmas because I don't care. I don't care. It's too cute and I'm sure they'll love it. Also finished objects. I'm not going to show you all of the Tour de Fleece stuff because we'll, well, there's a video for that if you want to watch that. But I am so pleased with this. I dyed it myself. It's 100% merino. And I spun it and I'm in love with it. And it's only 100 grams. So I'm going to have to make something very special with this. Yes, indeed. And the red came out really, really well too. Also dyed by me. I think there's only about 50 grams there. So it has to be a really, really special project. But what you can do, if you buy artisan spun 
dyed yarn or whatever you can't afford much because you know it, it takes hours it does cost a lot of money it's worth it but it does cost a lot of money so a good way of using it is to maybe use it just as the brim on a hat or the cuff on your mittens gloves what have you you know use it as a contrast for socks use it sparingly use it lovingly i shall be very happy with that lot okay so i also have some a purchase today um i don't buy yarn very often because i dye my own um but i've been following this dyer for a long time a friend of mine went up to a, a an event for knitting and what have you and brought back some of these people's yarn and i fell in love with it and uh, i've been following them ever since and then the other day i saw something that i couldn't resist and of course you can't just buy one you can't who just buys one so um i'm unboxing i'm unboxing a purchase here on my channel now i have pre-slit the envelope open so as not to make too much noise and look how cute the package looks little rainbow sticker fabulous i've covered up my address so that um nobody works out where i live and tries to move in and make me cook for them and and that you know i've got one of them already so are we ready it's sock yarn Oh my. You ready? Wow. Look at this. Oh my god. Okay, so the seller, the dyer, in the UK obviously, dye candy. They have a Facebook group. This colourway is called Afflicted. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's they call it their super sock blend. Wow, that is beautiful. Look at that. Those are my colours. Purples and a little bit pink and a little bit yellow. Holy moly. This next one, obviously still dye candy. Same sock base. <laughs> called Nanny State. Super Sock, 75% Super Wash Merino, 25% Nylon. Wow, purples, pinky, peachy colours, teal. Wow. So you know I said I hadn't I haven't started any socks yet. Mine of yours. Mine. Because I've done my sister and her boyfriend. I've done some for my husband. The one that moved in and insisted I cook for him. Actually, it's a complete lie. He cooks for me now because my cooking's so bad. And um, these are mine. Get off. Mine, mine, mine. So thank you, Die Candy. I love you. They're amazing. So that's all the um, that's all the orders that have actually arrived. I have put in an order for some yarn from Hobby H O B B I I because um, I want to make a little another little blanket for Junior when Junior comes. I currently have Dexter trying to get on my lap now. Um, yeah, so last week was insane. It was insanely hot. Um, the the Brits like it's a, it's a the Brits like to moan about the weather. Let's face it, we don't have air conditioning because for the three or four days that we actually see the sun, it's not worth buying an entire air conditioning unit. 
Um, but wow, it was about 32 degrees one day, between 30 and 32 degrees most of last week. And we have been begging for some rain. We had a little bit, but London, my goodness, had loads. Um, up sort of Stratford Way, the, even the um, train stations were yay deep in, in water, as we saw on the news. Um, we didn't get much, but it was enough to bring the temperatures down, so that's good. Um, right after I filmed the last podcast, but <laughs> before I actually managed to upload it, because the, the, the web the Wi-Fi at the campsite was horrific, um, we went camping. Um, we've been camping quite a bit. That was the intention. We used to go camping a lot in the tents, uh, in a tent, um, but uh, we just kind of got too old for sleeping on the floor and mooning around in a in a tent. Um, and then when my mum died, um, I had some money given to me um, from her estate, and we bought a transit van, and we um, we converted it into a very very basic camper. So we literally just have chairs that fold out into a bed and a cupboard and a little port -a -loo. And then we put an awning on the outside of it and it suits us fine. Um, most campsites have electrical hookup. Um, so we have a, a, a cable that runs in from the electric hookup and we can boil a kettle. We have gas if we can't get electric hookup. And um, yeah, we're happy. We have the, the two dogs. We do lots of walking. I do lots of sitting around knitting. Home from home, really. <laughs> is it? Um, and then it got crazy hot, and um, I'm I wasn't actually able to work. Uh, my actual job, the one that I get paid for, is I am a lamp worker, and we'll go into that in another episode. But basically, I melt glass for a living into beads and um, characters and and all that sort of stuff so that is what I do for a living and I haven't been able to do it because I do it in a, in a shed in the garden and I have a kiln in there and a naked flame and when it's already over 30 the shed is over 40 and it's really uncomfortable um, and impossible actually because the machines that I use pull oxygen out of the air and when you're in a small shed with oxygen being sucked out there's none left um so you haven't been able to week work for a week so that's why i've been playing with all this stuff and uh, having a great time and now today i'm back to work i worked all weekend and uh, yeah that's pretty much what's been happening so that's it really that is my podcast and i don't think it's too long this time because the first one was quite long wasn't it <laughs> so I have to say thank you for watching really appreciate you taking the time out to watch and subscribe and hit that like button that gives me joy and if you'd like to comment tell me what's what's up what you're up to I'd love to hear from you this is about community for me and um, learning from other people helping other people. I might be putting up um, tutorials soon. So if there's anything that I'm doing that you'd like me to show you, I'd be more than happy to um, when I get the technology sorted out because we are still in baby steps. So thank you for watching. I'm going to leave it there. Have a fabulous day. Have a fabulous week. And I will see you soon on the next one. Bye.